السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, speaking to you is Mr. Mahmoud Makram. Hope everyone is fine. Today we are completing, we're gonna complete Unit 7, Lesson 2. Okay, as usual, you know, today it's words, it's vocabulary. So we will start. Lesson 2 by a couple of words that might be hard for some of you. We start with describing these arrows. We start by describing these arrows. How do we describe them? The first one is the first one is diagonal. The first one is diagonal. Diagonal. As you can see, diagonal means moving from the top corner to the bottom corner or vice versa. Then the second word is horizontal, 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 horizontal. And it means level or flat, like going like this. And the last one is vertical, vertical. Vertical means going straight up. Vertical means going straight up. So now let's test your understanding. What about these stripes? How do you describe them? How do you describe these? How do you describe them? Are they diagonal, horizontal, or vertical? Yes, the right answer is horizontal. Horizontal. Then the second word is, okay, how do you describe these, li these lines? How do you describe them? They are, they are, yes, you're right, diagonal. And the last one is, these lines are, of course, vertical, vertical. Then, it's all about sports now. So, what are the players in the photos trying to do to Messi? Most defenders around the globe, whenever they play against Messi and the, the ball is in Messi's possession, and they are trying to, to what? They are trying to what? Yes, they are trying to not stop him. They are trying to tackle him. They are trying to do what? To tackle him. So when Messi has the ball, the only option you have is trying to tackle him. To try to get the ball, to tackle means to try to get the ball by catching someone, a player, or knocking him down. This is the meaning of tackle here. Of course, the word tackle has another meaning as a verb. To tackle means to try to stop a problem. So the government is trying to tackle the problem of crime. This is an example. He is a very wise man. He can tackle problems easily. Then the common word. What do you call this sport? This sport is called, yes, it's archery, archery, it's archery, archery. And the person who plays it is the archer, the archer, the archer. Okay, so what is archery? It's a sport in which you try to shoot, to shoot arrows. It's a sport in which, you, in which you try to shoot arrows. Then comes the common word. These are different styles of swimming. Of course, when you do swimming as a sport, as a professional sport, you swim in different ways. This is the first style. You call it butterfly swimming. Butterfly swimming. Then the common one is Okay, what do you call this style of swimming? You call it crawl. Crawl. It's a style of swimming called crawl. And the last one is, this is the backstroke. This is the backstroke swimming. This is the backstroke. The backstroke. So now, there are three different styles of swimming. The first one is butterfly, as shown in the photo. And the second one is crawl, as shown in the second photo. And the last one is backstroke. Then, you know, of course, the word referee. In football, you have a referee, but this man, do you call him referee or he has another, like, there is a different way of calling him or naming him? Actually, he's not a referee. He, it's a kind of referee, but the right word is umpire. 
The right word is umpire. So this man is a referee. In football, we say referee. But this man, the other one, this one, is not a referee. He is an umpire. Of course, in tennis, we don't say referee. We say umpire. Then, when we do sports, we have different places to practice this sport. So we start with this one of course you play football on a football pitch of course you play football on a football pitch but you play tennis you play tennis on a tennis court so this is not this is not a pitch it's a court this is a court but you play football on a pitch on a pitch pitch then the last one when you run that area around that pitch what do you call it you practice running on there or you do running on that track so now you have three different things so you have the court for tennis you have the pitch for football and you have the track for running of course of co you still have rink and you have lanes and you have different words and you have circuit for car racing you call it circuit so you have different words then the common word this is an activity i only chose the activities that will be like of great benefit to you so i chose this activity from the workbook so it's a sport in which you use a bow and arrows it's a sport in which you use a bow and arrows by bow you know bow of course this word you know in archery i told you about the archery you use bows or arrows in archery of course the word bow just to add your information can be like pronounced in a different way you can say to bow to base to bend your body like what Japanese do like what Japanese people do when they welcome someone they bow to him to bend your body but here you say bow bow and arrows so this sport is called yes archery have two teams of nine players so two teams and every team has nine players this is baseball hit so in a in, in baseball, every team has nine or consists of nine players only. Hit a ball across a table over a net. Of course, this is ping pong. Then use the word backstroke, crawl and butterfly stroke. These are different styles of swimming, of course. To try to get a ball through a hoop and into a net. When you play basketball, you try to put the ball into the hoop. Drive cars very fast around the circuit. This is, of course, the motor racing. Now, this is a very interesting activity, actually. You have some idioms that come from sports that we use in our daily life. I will start with the last one. The ball is in your court. When someone asks you now about what to do, you can say, actually, the ball is in your court. You're the one who can decide now. This one is very common. But let's go here to this one to score an own goal. Suppose that there is a student who didn't do his homework. And then the teacher punished him. And this student went to the manager to tell him that this teacher punished him. So the manager asks him why why he punished you the student says because i didn't do my homework so now he scored an own goal he scored an own goal he did a thing that's not good for him but he himself caused this harm this harmful thing to himself so this is to score an own goal means to do something which is against your interests to be bowled over so to bowl someone over means to surprise him and to please him. So I bowled Rakan over when I told him that he came first in the competition, for example. So to move the goal posts, number three, to move the to move the goal posts is a very nice idiom, actually. So now, actually, I like in the beginning, I planned to go to Madrid to spend the summer holiday, but then I changed my mind and, and decided to stay in my country. So now I changed my plans. To, so to move the, the goal posts means to change plans without telling 
any one which is f to come on in leaps and bounds so if someone like makes leaps and bounds so he's he's making great improvement or great progress so this is b to be on a sticky wicket the wicket is the goal in cricket that thing that has three like posts so the ball in your the sorry to be on a sticky wicket means to be in a difficult situation as you can say i am in cold water or i am in a tight corner so you have different ways to express or to talk about or to show that you are in a difficult situation which is of course a the ball is in uh, uh, the ball is in your court it's uh, the right answer is d which is it's your turn to make a decision i told